life on the Red Horse Ranch. There's plenty of excitement at the Red Horse Ranch today. On the last night of the roundup, cattle thieves rode up and drove away many of the herd. Alabama and the boys insisted on going after the rustlers, but Steve Bradford, who was temporarily in charge of the outfit, forced them to come back without putting up a fight. This puts Mr. Carter in a very bad spot, as he was depending on selling the entire herd to help save the ranch from creditors. Alabama, Bradford, Rose, and Sam Carter are talking of the trouble at the ranch house. Uh, half of the red horse herd gone. It had to happen this year. Well, I'm mighty sorry, Mr. Carter. And that's what happened. The rustlers rode up in the night firing their guns and stampeding the herd. We did the best we could to save them. Oh, Dad, what are we going to do now? Well, we might be able to round up a few more of what's left, but I expect the rustlers saw to that. And I needed every cow with the red horse brand to carry me through. Uh, there won't be enough money for what's left to cover the interest, uh, let alone the loan itself. Oh, I never realized that men could be so cruel. Isn't there some way this lawlessness could be stopped? Oh, no, quiet, Rose. I guess we're not the first to suffer from rats like that. Well, Dad. believe me, if I ever get my sights lined on them cattle thieves, there'll be an end to this trouble. Now, how far did you follow them? Well, uh... I tell you, Mr. Carter, we... I'll tell you that, Mr. Carter. We didn't follow him. The whole sneaking outfit got out right from under our very noses. What? Well, Alabama, I never thought you'd run into anything like that without fighting back. I think you forget, Mr. Carter. I wasn't foreman of that outfit on the roundup. You're going to have to talk to Steve Bradford here about that. Oh, of course, yes. Uh, how about it, Bradford? Well, Mr. Carter... Uh... I knew how important this herd was to you. That's the reason I told them to stay and save what they could. We got the milling in no time, what was left of them. You know, that's not what I wanted to do. We could have cleaned out that mob before they got out of the valley, then rounded up the cattle. Well, but we couldn't have caught them. It was pitch dark. Why, riding red, I'd have been up with them in three more jumps, and I would have been, too, if you hadn't have called us all back, and you know it. I know, but I didn't want anyone to get hurt. I felt responsible for all the boys. Mr. Carter, I'm saying right here and now, there ain't a man in your outfit that ever held back on his own account. I'm asking you again to let us go after them rustlers. We'll get them and bring back every last longhorn they took away from you. Oh, no, no use to that, Alabama. Well, the first thing we got to do is to get what's left up to Danville and the cars. Beginning to rain outside. No telling when we can do that. But surely, Dad, there must be some way to bring those cattle back. We can't just sit by and not do anything about it. I don't reckon you'd have this red horse ranch now, Mr. Carter, if you hadn't fought for it a good many times. Yes, and now I'm too old to fight for what's mine. Oh, Dad, don't give up. Alabama and the boys want to go after them. And uh, if there was an ounce of spunk in Bradford here, we'd have them rustlers where they couldn't cause us no more trouble right now. Alabama, 
I've stood here and took about all I'm going to. I offered my help and did the best I could. This is the thanks I get. Yes, yeah, that's right, Alabama. We ought to be thanking Bradford for what he done for us. Well, if I made a mistake in what I did, Mr. Carter, I'll take the blame for it. I'll do what I can to make it right by it. I reckon there ain't much left to do. Well, with so much of the herd gone and no chance to get enough money to meet your loan this spring, you'll probably be glad to get this ranch off your hands. Oh, no, never. Of course, Mr. Carter, I'd sort of given up the idea of buying you out, but, well, as long as things have happened the way they have, I'm still willing to take it at the same price I offered you before. Bradford, you've been a real friend to me. I want to shake your hand. Mr. Carter, for heaven's sake, try to listen to me. Of course Bradford wants this ranch. He wants this ranch and every other piece of land in the whole country. I don't know what he wants it for, but... I think you've said enough. Not half as much as what I'd like to say. If you want me, you'll find me out in the bunkhouse. have to say, Alabama? Oh, not near as much as I'm saying before this thing's over. Where's Arizona? Well, he's out uh, trying to keep that herd in. Looks like a pretty bad storm, doesn't it? Yeah, and them rustlers are getting further away with them red horse cows every minute. The old rainy weather's a good time to go after rustlers. You can slip up close on them without being spotted. Carter don't see it that way. That Steve Bradford and his slick tongue got him buffaloed plenty. Well, I wouldn't put it past Bradford to be on that rustling deal, and there's plenty of reasons for me thinking so. Well, it don't pay to talk until you're ready to do something about it, Cheyenne. But you're foreman of the outfit again now, Alabama. You know we're ready to follow you. Whatever you want to do, we'll stick by you. Well, Carter may be right. If we was away from the ranch and something happened to the rest of the herd, we'd be to blame for it. By golly, that thunder's getting louder every minute. We'd better do something to get our minds off of this goings on. Move that lantern over here, Cheyenne. Sure. I'll deal out a hand of poker. Want in on it, boys? Yeah, just while well deal me a hand. Right. You might count Tenderfoot and me out, Bob. Keep on singing, Tex. It makes me think better. Uh, shuffle them good there, Bob. Sure will. Tenderfoot, yeah. you mind about what I was telling you when we was night guarding the other night? You mean about Bradford and what you'd heard about him? Yeah. I think I told you I heard he used to live over in El Paso. Yes? Well, I wrote a letter to the sheriff of El Paso to see if he knew anything about Bradford's deals over in that country. I remember that, Alabama. Yes. Well, if that sheriff ever answered my letter, it ought to be in Danville Post Office mighty soon. Why, that might be just the thing we need now. That's what I've been thinking, and sooner than I thought. I don't want Carter to know what I'm doing just yet, or for that matter, any of the rest of the boys. But I've got to get to Danville as soon as I can. Uh, Alabama, there's something else you told me out there, or you started to tell me. Something about your horse, Red, is running away, and oh. something about Bradford. Well, I'd rather not say anything about that now, Tenderfoot. I've got to think a little bit. I quit all my wild, rowdy ways. I'll punch no more cattle. I'll go home for the rest of my day. Get along, little doggies, get along, I say. Get along, little doggies, on your weary way. Moon, you got me steaming, keep me going home once more. Get along, little doggies. You ain't quitting, are you, Tex? I'm sorry, Alabama. I just ain't in that mood tonight. Bob. What's the idea of holding a straight flush and not betting on it? You gone loco? Well, consarn it, who gives a hang about playing cards? I can't keep my mind on the game. Oh, well, come on, boys. That's no way to be feeling. 
Can't we all sing something to cheer us up? That's always something a cowboy can do when it's raining. Well, many's the time I've sung the old Chisholm Trail with the wind and the snow beating in the face. That's right. It'll help if anything will. Oh, come on, boys. Let's swing into it. Come along, boys, and listen to my tale. I'll tell you all my troubles on the old Chisholm Trail. Call my tie-eye, yippee-yippee-yay, yippee-yay. Call my tie-eye, yippee-yippee-yay. On a ten-dollar horse and a forty-dollar saddle, and I'm going to punch in Texas cattle. Call my tie-eye, yippee-yippee-yay, yippee-yay. Call my tie-eye, yippee-yippee-yay. Old Ben Bolt was a flame good boss, but he'd go to see the girls on a saw-back horse. Come a tie-eye, yippee-yippee-yay, yippee-yay. Come a tie-eye, yippee-yippee-yay. Old Ben Bolt was a fine old man, and you know there was whiskey wherever he'd land. Come a tie-eye, yippee-yippee-yay, yippee-yay. Come a tie-eye, yippee-yippee-yay. It's cloudy in the west, and I'm looking like rain. And my darned old slickers in the wagon again. Come a tie-eye, yippee-yippee-yay, yippee-yay. Come a tie-eye, yippee-yippee-yay. Grip on my horse, and I don't know how. Roping at the horns of a two-you cow. Come a tie-eye, yippee-yippee-yay, yippee-yay. Come a tie-eye, yippee-yippee-yay. No shafts, no slicker, and it's pouring down rain. And I swear I'll never night hurt again. Come a tie-eye, yippee-yippee-yay, yippee-yay. Come a tie-eye, yippee-yippee-yay. Thunder on the trail. What is Carter to do? Will he finally sell out to Steve Bradford? Will Alabama find out the truth about Bradford in time to save Mr. Carter and the Red Horse Ranch? Mm -hmm. 